But we're going to start by coming onto our backs. And we're going to bring the soles of the feet together and the knees out wide. We'll just bring the hands to rest on the belly. And we're going to come into the breath for a few moments. Breathe through the nose. And breathing out through the nose. So I'll just keep an eye if anyone else joins in. And as you breathe in, just fill up the lungs and feel that diaphragm pushing the belly up and out. Drawing the hands away from each other. And as we exhale, slowly drawing back towards the mat. So inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. So you might, someone's got their mic on, so you might need to turn it off for now. Thanks. I'll turn it off. No worries. Cheers, darling. But if there's anything you need to say, just put it on and just shout out. That's fine. And we're going to breathe in for four, three, two, four, one. And we're going to breathe out for one, two, three, four. So just slowly bring your awareness into how you're feeling right here, right now. So just notice any aches, any pains. And just being aware of that. And we're going to slowly move the hands towards the rib cage now. And as you breathe in, just feel that rib cage expand. Pressing into the hands, and as you exhale, gently drawing back towards the midline. Here. So inhale as we grow, exhale as we draw in. Take that breath up to five or six if it's available. Just take your time. I'm going to slowly move the hands to the chest now. So take the hands to the chest and the shoulders. And as you inhale, get a sense of lifting, drawing the shoulders away from the body. Exhale as we draw it back down, draw the shoulders back in. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. The breathing is such an important part of yoga. And it's even more important now when we're working from home more, it may be exercising less. There's that tendency for that spine to become compressed. So really use this opportunity to grow, create space. We're going to slowly move our awareness to the whole body now. So imagine you're looking down at yourself. And as you inhale, see if you can cultivate a sense we're breathing in through the whole body and breathing out through the whole body. And at any time during the practice, you feel the mind wander or drift, just draw it back to the breath as many times as you need. On the next inhale, we're going to bring the knees in towards each other and slowly bring them into the chest one by one. Just be mindful, you might feel it on the hips a bit. But just give yourself a nice little hug and a gentle rock from side to side. So just take care of the lower back here. I'm going to slowly come to stillness. As you inhale, we're going to lift the forehead to the knees, exhale to lower. Start engaging the core and the abs. Inhale, shoot the fingers away, exhale to lower. Inhale to lift, exhale to lower. Let's take one more. Inhale. And exhale to lower. We're going to take hold of the big toes and we're going to bring the legs out, coming into our happy baby pose. We're just opening up the body here, opening up the hips there. So just take care of the groin area, the thighs. You can bend the knees, do whatever you need. And you can bring a bit more space to it's there. And slowly come back to centre, bring the knees in. And we're going to take the hands over the kneecaps and just take a few big circles in the air. 
So we're just opening out the body. And you can take a few in the opposite direction. Slowly bring the knees back in. And we're going to gently bring the feet to the mat. Just check that you can brush the heels with the fingertips. So that's the distance you want to be. I'm going to come into bridge first. We're going to lift the hips up. You can support your hips with the hands if you need to. Press the feet into the mat nice and strong. So this is working into the quads. Let's bring in a bit of stillness. Take one more inhale. And we're going to exhale to release. And we're going to just do a couple of exercising sizes in the abs now. So we're going to tilt the pelvis towards the belly. So take a moment to set up. Feel that lumbar spine pressing into the mat. And we're going to inhale as we lift the feet off. You can lift the chest off as well. You can straighten the legs. It's your choice. But try and keep that lumbar spine there. If you feel it lifted, engage the abs, draw it back. And we're going to hold it here for five, four, three, two, one, and release. And just hug it in. Let's take two breaths. You're going to take another one. So tilt that pelvis and lift up into your variation. So you can float the legs. You can cycle the legs. You can go from right to left if you want to work into the obliques a little bit. So the obliques are the abs on the sides. So we're just working. And let's keep going for five, four, three, two, one, and release. And just come back, take a few breaths. We're going to inhale as we shoot the legs in the air. So press the feet towards the ceiling, bring the toes towards the face, and we're flexing the feet, working into the backs of the legs. Point the toes and flex. Point and flex. You can mirror it with the hands as well. I know someone on the page mentioned about weak wrists. So something that's quite good for building wrist strength is just opening and closing the wrist. That's engaging those muscles. So you can curl the toes, rotate the ankles and the wrists in both directions. And you can open the legs out. It's entirely up to you. Start to bring the hands to the side. I'm going to start lowering the legs towards the mat. Engage the abs and lift. Take it over to the left. Engage the obliques and lift. Over to the right and lift. Take it down and up. We're just going to do a couple more cycles. So we're going to do one more leg raise down the middle and lift. Work with the breath. Over to the left. I'm just touching my abs, I want to check that I'm engaging them. It's quite nice when you feel your abs being engaged, actually. And slowly hug it in. Nice little hug. And we're going to end up in our tabletop position. So you can roll up and down the spine, or you can roll out to the side. And we're going to just come into our all fours. So hands spread out nice and wide. Knees below the hips, wrists below the shoulders. I'm going to take a few cat-cow breaths. So we're going to inhale as we tilt the pelvis away from the belly. See that belly drawing towards the mat. Shoulders coming in, gaze comes up. Exhale, reverse that motion, draw the pelvis towards the belly. Really arch that back. Take the shoulders away from each other, gaze comes down. So take a few in your own breath. And remember, we're, not, we're trying to avoid those pinch points. We're looking after the back, so maybe take a hand if it helps. Imagine someone's walking their hand up and down your spine, so it should feel quite fluid. Take it out from side to side. So just do whatever you need. Don't worry about what anyone else is doing. And we're going to come onto the fingertips, and we're going to lift the Knees off the mat, just hop them here for three, two, one, and release. Bring the hands back. We're going to tuck the toes under, 
And as you inhale, we're going to lift the hips up, coming into our downward facing dog. So just take your time. Bend the knees, pedal the feet. You want to draw the shoulders away from each other. So externally rotate the upper arms if you can. So just imagine, just rotate. So you should be able to feel that shoulder movement. We're going to inhale as we lift the heels away from the mat. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. One more time. Inhale. Exhale. We're going to take three lion's breaths. So when you exhale, open the mouth, stick the tongue out. We're going to take a nice big inhale. We're going to lift that right leg in the air. Flex the toes, spread that foot out. As you exhale, bend the knee, bring the right foot between the hands. We're going to drop that back knee. We're just going to bring the hands onto that right thigh. We're just going to work into that back hip flexor. And then we're going to take the bum back to the heels and work into that front hamstring. Brilliant. We're going to come into a side lunge. So bring the hands on the inside of that right leg. And we're going to lift onto that left heel. Now grab hold of the sword. Probably should have warned you. And we're going to just do a little swagger sequence. I hope it works. Now, just as a bit of a heads up, I practice with the exiles. We've got someone coming into the waiting room. So I practice with the Excel, so we practice Fiore. So some of, some of you might do Fiore as well. So it's mainly swords, two-handed, one-handed. We do Abrit Sari, which is the unarmed grappling. And we also do daggers. So I'm just going to, when I shout out the posters, it's going to be Fiore posters. So please adapt it if you've got different names for them. But we're going to come into our lunch. So if you haven't got a sword, obviously, just do it without a sword. Absolutely fine. So we're going to bring the sword up into our finestra. So remember, you want to be facing your opponent. So keep that control there. Have the arms nice and high, nice and strong. So we're working into that left hamstring. We're working into that right side as well. Keep it lifted. We're going to inhale, lift up, reverse that motion, come into a sinestra. So the sword comes behind you. Try to keep that point on your opponent. Coming onto the right heel this time. We're going to inhale, bring it back. Right lunge. And one more time, over to the left. So don't worry if you wobble. Don't worry if you fall out of it. And as you exhale, we're going to safely bring the sword onto the mat just for a moment. We're going to frame that left foot this time. Drop the right knee. So we're just going to work into that right side and we're going to work into that left side a little bit differently. Bring the bum back. Open up that left hamstring. So any little movements that you need. And remember, if there's any pain, just draw away from it. We want to be just on the edge of discomfort. It shouldn't hurt. We're going to come back into that left lunge. We're going to come back into our sinestra. So remember the control bit. So try and do these poses with honesty. And on the next inhale, we're going to come all the way up and mezzane across into a posta longa. So for us, we don't want to lock it out. We want to have a little bit of kick. So bending into the right knee here. Keep it nice and strong in the shoulders. Take a deep inhale. As you exhale, we're going to bend that left knee, come into a bicornio. You can keep the left knee slightly hovering. You lift up, foster longer. Bicornio. And longer. So just work through one more, all the way down. We're going to come up to longer again. And this time we're going to come down. We're going to drop that knee and come into our bicornio. We're going to bring the bum back to the heels and come into your frontale. So remember the eye line here. You want the hilt to be at eye level of your opponent. And come back into your bicornio. You lift back into your longer. So remember your creases here as well when you're changing your footwork. And this time we're going to step back with the left, step back with the right, and come into your coda longer. 
bending into that left knee. Now we're going to come back into our longer, but you can take a transitional pose. If you want to do cross with the dog of this Vrasana, you can do that or you can do another pose. We're going to crease that left foot, step back into your longer. We're going to release the left hand, bring it behind you, bend into that right knee as you bring the sword behind you into a warrior two. Variation. So adjust the feet if you need to. I'm going to bring the left hand behind the back, dip it back into your reverse warrior. Take the sword behind you. Keep it strong. Keep that right knee bent. We sometimes lose it in this pose. And we're going to inhale, come back to your warrior two. We're going to take the left hand on the sword. We're going to crease that left foot as we turn into our half sword pose. Hold it here. We're bending into the left knee now. So we're just coming towards the end of the swoga sequence. We're going to bring ourselves into goddess pose. So bring the toes away from the midline. Hold the sword nice and horizontally as we bend into the knees. And we pulse it here. Keep it nice and strong. Five, four, three, two, one, and lift. And bring the sword to the mat. So just give yourself some space. We're going to come into a forward fold. So take hold of the hilt, and you can use the hilt to support you as you come into your fold. If you want to go further down the blade. Be careful here, make sure it doesn't fall on you. If you are coming further down, safely release that sword onto the mat. You can bring the hands onto the mat. And just relax. We support your back, so use the hands. I'm gonna inhale. Exhale. And slowly on the next inhale, bring the hands to the waist and come all the way up. And we're going to slowly heel toe the feet towards each other. And come to the top of the mat. So there you go. So that was just a little spoken sequence. Hopefully it was okay. It's the first time I've ever, ever taught it. So um, any comments, any suggestions afterwards, most welcome. So we're going to come into our mountain pose. So you can bring the feet together. You can bring them a little bit further apart. Lift the toes up, spread them out towards the balls of the feet, and bring them back to the mat. So have a look at your feet. Feel them nice and soft. Shoulders away from the ears, arms by the side. Let's take three deep breaths. Gonna inhale, float the arms up, take the gaze up. Exhale, fold forward from the hips towards the mat. Inhale, as you lift up halfway. You can come to fingertips or shins or thumbs. Support the back. As you exhale, place the hands on the mat, bend the knees if you have to do that. Right leg back, left leg back. Let's come into our plank pose, nice and strong. So just check your alignment here. If you're dipping, gauge the core, lift up slightly. Let's take a nice deep inhale. And as you exhale, bend those elbows in towards the body. Drop the knees if you have to. Inhale as we lift up halfway. Untuck the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. Just take a nice deep inhale, and as you exhale, take the gaze between the hands, step or walk, feet to hands. We're gonna inhale, we come to our halfway lift, Ardha Uttanasana. Exhale to fold, Uddhalasana. Inhale to rise, gaze through the hands. 
Exhale, come back into Tadasana. Let's take a few shoulder rolls in both directions. Gonna inhale to rise. Exhale to fold. Inhale as you lift that halfway. Exhale as you step back into plank. And this time we're gonna lift the hips up, coming straight into downward facing dog. And we're gonna come back into plank. We're gonna roll the hips back up into downward facing dog. So these are just a couple of juicy spinal rolls. So work your way through one more. Use the breath. You should feel it in the spine. It should feel quite nice. And let's meet in our plank pose. Let's take a nice deep inhale. Exhale. Let's work down. Bend those elbows. Inhale as you lift up. Just be careful with the shoulders here. Exhale. Downward facing dog. Gonna inhale, you lift that right leg in the air. And as you exhale, bend the right knee, bring the right foot between the hands. We're gonna drop that left knee. Bring the left hand to the mat, right arm comes up. Nice little twist over to the right. Really feel that length. Nice deep inhale. As you exhale, release that right hand, frame that right foot. And we're going to lift that back knee and inhale up into our low lunge. So keep it nice and strong. And exhale to lower, inhale to lift. Exhale to lower, inhale to lift. One more time. Lower, hold it here. You should feel it in that back hip flexor. Inhale to lift. Take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, sweep the arms back, come into your arrow lunge. So shoot the fingers away from the body, nice and strong. Try not to collapse into that front leg. Take a nice deep inhale. And slowly lower it down, bring that knee down, bring the arms up, nice low lunge. You can add a back bend into this bit if you want. And we're gonna frame that front foot. Tuck the left toes under, remember, bend the elbow, shoot back into your three-legged dog. You've got the option of stacking the right hip over the left, take the gaze under the right armpit, or you can drop that right foot all the way back, Coming into your wild thing pose, it's your choice. When you're ready, let's meet back in three-legged dog. You can release that foot here, or you can come forward into a three-legged plank, lower it down, drop that right foot gently, untuck the left foot, and come back into your downward facing dog. We'll take three lines breaths here. I'm going to take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, take the gaze between the hands. You can set, walk, or float, feet to hands. Inhale, we lift up halfway. Exhale to fold. Inhale to rise, nice and tall. Exhale, come back into Tadasana, mountain pose. So just take a few moments here to see how you're feeling. Check your grounding, check your breath. You need to take a few shoulder rolls and you can do that. So we're gonna inhale to rise, take the gaze up, nice and tall. Exhale, fold forward from the hips. Inhale, we lift up halfway. Exhale, we step or float into plank. Just hold your plank. We're going to inhale it up into our downward facing dog. 
Let's come back into plank. Roll up, downward facing dog. And come back into plank. Remember to keep breathing. Roll up one more time, one more dog. Let's come back into plank. And as you exhale, bend those elbows in towards the body. Inhale, open the heart, untuck the toes. Exhale, downward facing dog. We're going to inhale that left leg in the air this time. Flex those toes. Exhale as you bend the left knee, bring the left foot between the hands, drop the right knee. Right hand stays on the mat, left arm comes up. Nice little twist to the left. Take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, drop that left hand. And we're going to inhale as we lift the back knee, coming into our low lunge. So keep it nice and strong, active fingers shooting up. Exhale to lower. You can hover the back knee if you want. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. Inhale to lift. Exhale to lower. One more time. Come back into your low lunge. Exhale. Sweep the arms behind you. Arrow lunge. Check you're not collapsing into that front knee. And nice and strong. And we're going to inhale as we come back, drop that back knee, shoot the arms all the way up. You can take a back bend here if you want. And then slowly frame that front foot. We're going to bend those elbows a little bit as we shoot back into three-legged dog. Your options here are you can come into dog, you can stack the left hip over the right, take the gaze under the left armpit, you can drop that left foot and come into a wild thing pose. Otherwise, we're going to meet back in three-legged dog. If you want to have a go at a three-legged vinyasa again, you can come forward into a three-legged plank, gently bend the elbows, slowly drop that left foot, untuck the toes, and come back into your downward-facing dog. We're going to take three more lion's breaths. I love lion's breaths. They're really surrendering breath, and then it will go. Take one more inhale. As you exhale, gaze between the hands, step, jump, or float, feet to hands. We're going to inhale, we lift up halfway. Exhale to fold. We're going to inhale to rise. Drishti to thumbs. Exhale, come back into Tadasana. Let's take a few breaths here. Take a few shoulder rolls if you want to, both directions. We're almost there. Just be mindful of how the body's feeling. Just going to come back into our Tadasana pose. So check your grounding, lift your toes, spread them out, shoulders away from the knees. Imagine there's a piece of string pulling you up from the crown of the head. So nice length now. We're going to inhale to rise. Exhale to fold. Inhale as you lift up halfway. Exhale as you step back into plank pose. Just check yourself here. We're going to hold it for a couple more breaths. Take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, lower it down. So elbows in towards the ribs. If you want to drop the knees first, then you can drop the knee. Try to see if you can still work the upper body so you're not collapsing. And we're going to inhale as we open the heart. Exhale, come back into downward facing dog. Adjust the feet if you need to.
Then take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, take the gaze between the hands. Step, walk, or float, feet to hands. So in the inhales, we lift up halfway. Exhale to fold. We're going to stay in the forward fold for a little bit longer. You can heel toe the feet a little bit further apart if it helps. And just hang here for a few moments. You can shake out, move the head, take hold of opposite elbows. So this should feel quite nice. Just relax the back, bend the knees if you need to. And slowly come to stillness and just take hold of whatever's available, whether it's the big toes, the mat, the knees, the thighs. And as you inhale, we're going to lift up, straighten the arms. As you exhale, fold. Inhale to lift. Exhale to fold. Just slowly bring the hands to the waist. And on the next inhale, we're going to come all the way up. And you can take the hands up, shoot the fingers towards the sky, you come onto the tiptoes, nice big stretch. And exhale to release. We're going to take hold of the right wrist with the left hand. As you inhale, we're going to turn over to the left. So we're stretching into that right side body here. We're going to inhale to come up. Switch over to the left wrist and we're going to stretch it over to the right. So just take care. It might be different on this side. Work with the breath. And inhale to come all the way up and slowly bring the arms all the way back down. We're going to come into chair pose. So if you need to widen your feet and you can do that. Just take a couple of breaths here to set yourself. You're going to inhale as we dip the hips, sweep the arms, coming into our Mukhasana, chair pose. So press the feet into the mat. Remember you're drawing the ribs in so you're zipping up through that midline, not sticking the bum out, so nice and strong. You should feel it in the quads as well. Take it a little deeper if it's available. And bring the hands to heart center. Take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, we're going to twist it over to the right. You can take the left elbow to the outside of the right one, but don't force anything. Try to keep the knees in line. So check the knees in. We're going to inhale as we come back to centre. And we're going to come into warrior three here. You don't have to do this. If you want to give it a go, we're going to bring the arms out in front of you. Press that left foot into the mat. Slowly, slowly lift that right foot off the mat. And we're going to pivot forward from the hips. You can bring the arms straight in front of you, nice and strong. We're going to slowly bend that left knee and gently bring the hands to the mat. We're going to bring the right toes to the mat and we're going to shoot that left leg back into a three-legged plank. Slowly bend the elbows, gently release the left toes. Untuck the right, coming into your upward facing dog. And coming into your downward facing dog. Take one more in now. As you exhale, take the gaze between the hands, step, walk, or float, feet to hands. We're going to inhale as we lift up halfway. Exhale to fold. Inhale to rise. Nice and tall. Gaze to the hands. Exhale. Come back into the gas mat. Take a few moments. We're going to do the same thing on the other side. <coughs> so remember to adjust the feet if you need to.
We're going to inhale as we dip the hips, sweep the arms, coming into Utkatasana. Now, if you want to go a little deeper, you can come onto the balls of the feet. Sink a little deeper. It's your choice. You can take hold of opposite elbows. Pull up through the triceps. When you're ready, bring the hands to heart center. Take a nice deep inhale. Exhale. Let's twist it over to the left this time. And just check that the knees are still fairly in line. And take a nice deep inhale. As you exhale, we're going to bring the hands back to heart center. Release the arms. And remember, we're going to come into our warrior three again on this side if you want to do so. Gently lift up. Start bringing that left leg up this time. See if you can find a point of focus. Don't worry if you want to this pose. I often do. Try to line up the hips. You might have to externally rotate that left hip. And we're going to bend into that right knee. Slowly bring the hands to the mat. Bring the left toes to the mat. Shoot the right leg back. So we should be in three-legged plank. Slowly bend the elbows. Drop the right toes on top to left. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. And let's take three more nine breaths here. We take one more inhale. As you exhale, we're going to gaze between the hands. Step, walk, or float. Feet to hands. We're going to inhale as we lift and lengthen. Exhale to fall. Inhale to rise through her staff, nice and tall. Exhale, let's come back into Tadasana. We're almost there. We've got about five or six minutes to go. So we're just going to do a couple more standing poses. So we're going to take tree pose. So most of you know what this is. So we're going to check our grounding. So make sure you're rooting through the feet fully. All four corners, nice and grounded. You can start on whichever side you want. So we're going to lift one foot off the mat and just bring it. Wherever it's comfortable, not on the knee. So above the knee, below the knee. You can even have the toes touching the floor. So it's entirely up to you. So don't worry. Find a point of focus. I'm going to bring the hands to heart center. Don't worry if you wobble out there. When you're ready, you can open that tree. Slowly bring the hands back to heart center. You can release that tree if you want straight away, or you can slowly bring that right knee into the chest and just hug it in, and flex that foot, rotate the ankle in both directions. Nice and strong. And release. And just shake it out. We're going to work on the other side now. So press the other foot into the mat. Take hold of the other foot this time. So bring it up to wherever it's comfortable. And remember, you've got to lose the ego. It's not really about getting it as close to the groin as possible. It's just doing it with honesty. Your body. You've also got to be safe with your alignment. You're not forcing the pose. Bring the hands to the heart center. And release that tree when it's available. Ah, I'm going to lose this one. Slowly, slowly bring the hands back to heart center. And again, you can release that tree, or bring that knee to the chest, hug it in, rotate the ankle, flex that foot, and slowly release. Just shake it out. We're going to bring the feet mat distance apart, so nice and wide. Bring the hands to heart center. 
And slowly, slowly come into your yogi squat. Don't worry if you fall, don't worry if the heels lift all the way up. Totally fine. You can stay here. You can have a go at crow pose, which I'll run through very quickly, or you can bring your bum to the mat. This might be quite nice. It's a juicy little stretch. Bring the elbows to help open the hips. If you want to have a go at crow pose, bring the hands onto the mat, have a little go at the distances. You might need to walk the feet slightly away from the hand. Lift onto the balls of the feet. And we're going to slot the knees in towards the armpits. If they're about here, then you're not really ready for crow pose. So don't, don't force it. Dip them in and slowly, slowly start coming forward. You can have a little go at lifting one foot off at a time. Just a little bit of a fun pose. It's quite strong on the hands and the wrists, so be careful. And slowly come back. We'll bring the bum to the mat. And we're going to come into our final pose, Shavasana, corpse pose. Probably the most important pose. A lot of people tend to leave classes at this point, sadly, because they're rushing to get somewhere else. So slowly come to the mat. Let's have a nice big stretch before we get into it. Squeeze everything, even the face, the hands, the glutes, the feet. And as you exhale, just release. Bring the arms towards the sides, nice big space in the armpits. We're just going to be here for about a minute or so. So when you're ready, just slowly start deepening the breath. We're going to start wriggling the fingers and the toes. Start rotating the ankles and the wrists in both directions. So we're just bringing a bit of life back into the body. Just bring the legs in towards each other. And slowly bring each knee into the chest, one by one. And just give yourself a nice little hug and a gentle rock. So this is really important. Have a nice big stretch, any other little movements that you need to do. And we're going to meet in a cross-legged position. So you can roll up and down the spine, or you can roll out to the side. Whatever is safe for you. You can come into... Walk this pose, entirely up to you, or you can just be comfortable cross-legged. Hands resting on the thighs or hands to heart centre. We're going to end with our three clearing breaths. So we're just going to breathe in through the nose, and when you exhale, just open the mouth and let it all go. And you can bring the thumbs up to the third eye, or you can keep them resting on the legs. And just thank yourself for a nice, a strong practice. Notice your progress. Remember to work with the breath. Even on days when you're not practicing, just take a few moments away from your desk or whatever you're doing just to breathe. The inner light in me will always, always honour the inner light in each and every one of you. Thank you for today's practice.
Thank you very much, everybody. We went a couple of minutes over because I know we started a couple of minutes late because we were waiting. Everyone's still there. Brilliant. <laughs> All right, thanks, guys. Hopefully, we'll do another one next weekend. Um, any comments, any feedback, just send me a message, no problem, yeah? Take care, my lovelies.